Hi everybody, it's Peter Zellens, Greeny Flix Adventure 8 and welcome to another video. All right, today the video is about megapixels. Going back many years in digital photography, it was once said that uh, once you got to 12 megapixels, that's all you need if you're comparing 35 millimeter film photography. That's all you need. Well, there's a whole bunch. If I went back through my archive of collection of cameras, there's a whole bunch of 12 megapixel cameras and they all vary in size and also sensor. Yes, you can get 12 megapixel on something like that big as far as the sensor is concerned or 12 megapixel on 35 millimeter film or sensor size uh, that big. What's the difference? I'm in Manly, Australia, in Sydney, Australia. Today, beautiful day. It's winter's day, believe it or not. T-shirt, outstanding. There was a video that I did ages ago regarding megapixels for photography. Do megapixels matter? And I compared 12, 20, 24, and 45 megapixel cameras and shot the same lens, uh, different scenarios, and you know, did it really matter? Well, watch the video and you'll see whether it actually does matter. Okay, I've got a bag full of cameras here. So let's start with the first one. The first one's really simple. A smartphone. In this case here, it's an iPhone 12, and it's about 12 megapixels. So really tiny sensor, but a whole bunch of intelligence and smart software and whatever to get a decent shot. So I'll take some shots with this. All right, so the big camera I've got today is the Nikon D700, and I've got an old lens on here a 28 millimeter, 50 mil, two 50 millimeter old vintage zoom lens here where you just pump it out. It's actually a macro lens as well, focusing down to 0.32 meters. So this is a 12 megapixel camera. The sensor is 12 megapixel, it's a full frame. That's a big one. And then I've gone for a whole bunch of other cameras. This is a great little camera that I've had used quite a bit over the years. And that's a Canon G15. That's a 12 megapixel camera as well. As far as its focal length is concerned, it's very similar to that lens there. 28 millimeters to about 120, 130. There'll be some details in the video as far as the different focal lengths. But the sensor is really small as well, only about six millimeters wide. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, another 12 megapixel pack camera, and this is a what they call uh, Olympus Mu Tough 8000. And yeah, well, that's a really small lens small sensor hard to see screen on the back here but um, I love the designs what one of these amazing designs um, which is very quite unique made out of stainless steel uh, but anyway so that's 12 megapixel and uh, my final camera is one that I use quite a bit in my adventure travel and that's uh, this one here that's the cool Pix W300 so this is waterproof down to about five or six meters or maybe actually further waterproof 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 down to 30 meters incredible and uh, this uh, does uh, video as well as stills 4k video which is good that's really handy and uh, also 12 megapixels so we'll be able to take some shots at different locations today uh, around the beach but also as I go for a walk up in the hills here some close-ups far distances and we'll see what the what the results are like
get too close to the edge here. <laughs> it's a bit scary. It's, it's a long way down. Oh my goodness. Yes, I suppose that's a 50 meter drop or thereabouts. I don't want to fall over the edge, that'd be the end of me. And then you wouldn't have any more YouTube videos. I guess everyone's going sad, sad, sad. So if you haven't already subscribed, then do subscribe. If you haven't already liked, then do like. This could be your last opportunity. All right, well, I think I better not go any further, eh? But anyway, I'll take some shots around here. Well, any surprises with the photography? The, the small cameras and the small sensors means that for whatever f-stop it shoots at, whether it's uh, 1.8 I think for the Canon, uh, or 3.5 on the little Olympus, the depth of field that's normally associated with that is really quite narrow if it was 35 millimeter speak, but once you put it on a small sensor like that, that depth of field becomes cool into about 16, 22, 64, and you would have seen that in some of the shots here. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Um, the ease of use, without a doubt, the smartphone. Smartphone. Smartphone's the easiest one to use because it's always with you and you can just take the shot. But if you'd like, and uh, then on, on the other end of the scale, if you really like mucking about with shutter speeds and apertures and ISO, well then the easiest one to use is the dedicated camera, the Nikon uh, digital SLR or mirrorless camera. And then in those situations where you need a specialist camera for a specialist activity. So my W300 Nikon, without a doubt, for adventure travel, for motorcycling, where you just shove it in your pocket, take it out, extreme conditions, dusty, cold, wet, underwater. That's fantastic. Much better than, than the Olympus, which is the whole menu system is crazy. And I don't think the quality is really up there with the Nikon. And then the, uh, the the Canon G15. I mean, that's quite a unique camera, also in the sense you've got this the feel of a, um, a DSLR or mirrorless camera, and you've got the manual functions that you can apply and use it like a, a dedicated manual camera. The focus you still can't, can't control very well, unfortunately, with the Canon. Um, so it's really a hybrid between just a, a committed camera uh, to that of a dedicated camera that's really compact and something in between. So what would you shoot with? A lot of people I suppose would just shoot with the phone, iPhone, with a uh, smartphone. Um, but then there's all those different options. Anyway, I welcome your thoughts, your comments. Uh, what, what combination of 12 megapixel cameras do you have or do you all just have these mega things that have got 40 and 50 and 100 megapixels. Do you see the difference? Welcome your comments. If you liked the video, then give it a thumbs up. That really, I really appreciate that. That helps the channel. And if it's the first time to my channel, we haven't already subscribed, then do press subscribe. You'll be notified when the next video is out. I may well be on my journeys around Australia and in different locations during the course of September and October of 2022, if you're in this time zone right now, and which means there will be some travel videos that will be coming out in the coming months, and I might well be travelling by the time you see this video. I hope you're enjoying it. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you on the next video, which uh, no doubt there will be more stories, more sights to see. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon. Cheers. Bye.